Okay, welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized low budget science channel. <laughs> do not like, do not click subscribe. Today we're going to talk about topic 1.3. Uh, vectors and scalars and this this topic is very very important for IB physics and physics in general so your learning objectives by the end of this lesson you will be able to define vectors and, and scalars excuse me uh, multiply a vector and a scalar resolve vectors into their horizontal and vertical components Calculate the magnitude and direction of a vector given its vertical and horizontal components and vice versa. Add and subtract vectors both uh, visually and quantitatively. Okay, so let's jump into some definitions. First, scalars are quantities that can be defined by a single number. Okay, so some examples of that would be time, distance, mass, speed, and temperature. Okay, all you need is the quantity and that's it. Vectors, however, have two properties. Uh, a single number, which we call magnitude, and a direction. Okay, so they have a quantity and uh, we know which direction they are pointed in. Okay, some examples of this include displacement, weight, velocity, acceleration and force and we typically show the direction with arrows uh, and we can also give an angle as you'll see a little later so uh, we're going to write vectors with an italic bolt face in this presentation uh, but there are some other ways to do it um, also the uh, the magnitude is written as uh, the absolute value of that A um, or, or just an italic A, okay? Uh, you could also write A with a little arrow over the top and we'll see, we'll see an example of that a little bit later. Okay, so speaking of examples, wow, <laughs> look at that. Um, yeah, that's pretty boring. So here we have a few arrows and uh, these vectors have equal magnitudes or lengths, but they have different directions. And so these vectors are not equal. Here, however, you see three arrows that have the same magnitude and are pointed in the same direction. And these are therefore equal, okay? Same magnitude, same direction. They're equal vectors then. Okay, uh, next we'll look at multiplying a vector by a scalar. Okay, so um, we can do this. So here you can see vector f, and if you look over here, you can see 2f, okay? We've multiplied our vector by two. The direction remains the same, but the magnitude has now doubled, okay? So if, if you counted these boxes carefully, uh, and you could even use a Pythagorean theorem, uh, what you would notice is that the magnitude of 2f is going to be double the magnitude of f itself. Okay, uh, here we have a negative scalar being multiplied by f, and this decreases the magnitude by half, and it also changes the direction, okay? So the direction of our negative, uh, our negative vector is going to be 180 degrees to the original vector. Okay, and that's going to be very important when we look at vector subtraction in a little bit. Okay, speaking of subtraction and addition, we're going to look at what addition of vectors looks like. This is just going to be a visual representation, but it's never a bad idea to visually represent vectors, even if you're adding them quantitatively. And we'll look at what that looks like a little bit later. Okay, so right now we're just going to visually add these together. We're adding F and G. Okay, so vector F, vector G. Uh, I'm gonna show you two methods on how you might do that. The first one is a little bit more time consuming. So first thing we do is we draw both of our vectors as if they're coming out of the same origin. So if we look at the tail, uh, the non-arrow end of the vector, 
we put the tail on the origin. Okay, so there's vector f, there's vector g. Second step is to complete a parallelogram with sides f and g. Okay, so in this case, I just made a copy of g and popped it up here at the end of f. And I made a copy of f and put it at the end of vector g here. And our final step is to draw a diagonal line from the origin uh, to the other side of the parallelogram. And we now have uh, what's called our resultant vector, f plus g, okay? So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. We've just added some vectors. Nice. Okay, uh, method two is the tip to tail method. And uh, this isn't in SOCOS for some reason, uh, your textbook, but anyway, uh, it's slightly faster. So uh, you just arrange the vectors so that the tail of one vector is pointed uh, into the tip of another one, or maybe that should be worded backward anyway. Uh, it doesn't matter if you start with G or F, uh, the result is going to be the same, okay? So you just draw a line connecting the tail of vector F here to the tip of vector G, and there's your new vector, okay? There you go. So let's talk about subtraction of vectors. So here I have vector F and I have vector G, same vectors as before. But I would like to subtract vector f from vector g. So the way that I start uh, to do that is by reversing the direction of f or just uh, rotating it 180 degrees. Uh, and you'll note that the magnitude of negative f is the same as the magnitude of f. It's just its direction's opposite. Okay, so we've done this. We've rotated our vector by 180 degrees. And now uh, we will use the tip to tail method. We'll just draw a line from the tail of G to the tip of F. And that will give us our new resultant vector G plus negative F. Okay, so remember that this is equal to G minus F. So subtraction. Ta-da! Okay, I've used this word before, but... Uh, Whenever you make a new vector as a result of addition or subtraction, we call that new vector the resultant vector, okay? You could, also, you could also give it its own name if you wanted to. So we could say that G minus F is equal to H, and then this would now be vector H, okay? And uh, you can use any variable you want to represent a vector. doesn't matter. We define our variables. Okay, so uh, kind of a key point when dealing with vectors, uh, any two-dimensional vector can be assembled by the addition of its x and y components. And um, since a vector is defined only by magnitude and direction, its position doesn't really matter. So we can move our vector to the origin of a Cartesian plane. And what we now have is a right triangle, okay? So here's the hypotenuse of the right triangle, and that is our vector. We also have a vertical, a vertical leg of the triangle and a horizontal leg of the triangle. Okay, so the vertical leg of the triangle is produced by multiplying the hypotenuse, or the magnitude of our vector, by sine of the angle, theta. We measure this angle against the uh, horizontal. If you were to measure this angle, then your sine and cosine conventions would be reversed. Okay, so the uh, horizontal component is given by a cosine function. Again, we multiply cosine of theta by the magnitude of our hypotenuse. And now we have the horizontal component of vector A, and we have the vertical component of vector A. Okay, so uh, I think I've already made this point. I might need to edit this slideshow. Uh, so any two-dimensional vector is the resultant vector of the addition of its X and Y components. So if I add the horizontal component A sub X here to the vertical component A sub Y here, the result of that addition will be my original vector.
Wow, nice, convenient. Uh, the magnitude of our components can be determined using SOHCAHTOA, which you've hopefully learned in previous math lessons, but um, basically just indicates that for the opposite, uh, the leg opposite to our angle, we use a sine function, okay? And that would be this guy here. The, for the leg uh, adjacent to the angle or attached to the angle, uh, we would use a cosine function. And there may be some cases where uh, the vector is not so nicely set up as this, and you may be given an angle uh, that requires you to, again, flip, flip the conventions around. So just be aware that Sokoto is pretty useful. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about vectors in the unit circle. There, I put together a GeoGebra sketch that I'll, I'll share uh, in the description for this video. Um, actually, I played it, and it's not as fun as I, I thought maybe it would be. I think I need to add, add a few features. But anyway, um, here you can see that we have this vector, which we're calling R. And R is for radius if we're dealing with a unit circle. So... Uh, normally, a unit circle would have a radius of 1, uh, but this would work for a circle of any radius. So uh, when we're analyzing vector r, uh, we consider in vector terms vector r to be equal to the sum of its horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so if we go uh, tip to tail here, we find that r neatly matches that tip to tail description that I gave earlier in this video. Okay, uh, the magnitude of our vector then can be determined using the Pythagorean theorem, which you guys are all familiar with. So the magnitude of R is just going to be equal to the square root of our horizontal component squared plus our vertical component squared, okay? So our X and Y components can be determined using trigonometric identities where the horizontal component is equal to the magnitude of our vector times cosine of the angle alpha, which I've given here. And the horizontal component, sorry, vertical component is equal to the magnitude of our original vector times the sine of angle alpha. Okay, so that's given here. And uh, again, this is our opposite. This is our adjacent. Um, I'm not gonna cover Sokoto in detail in this lesson. Um, hopefully you're familiar with it. If not, I bet YouTube has multiple good videos. Okay, uh, so the angle of our vector, uh, this is kind of inaccurate actually. The tangent of our angle is equal to our vertical component divided by our horizontal component, okay? So that means our angle itself will be equal to the arc tangent, oops, uh, the arc tangent of the vertical component divided by the horizontal component, okay? So this is uh, really, really useful. Uh, you basically have to use this uh, equation here in order to find your angles have to is, I, I guess, a strong word. You, you could actually uh, use the inverse cosine and inverse sine function as well, depending on the context. Uh, okay, so if we want to quantitatively add and subtract our vectors, we can do that as well, okay? So instead of uh, just using our visual representation here, we can actually quantitatively do it as well. So if we count boxes uh, for the horizontal component of vector f, one, two, three, four, uh, five, actually it's five. Dang, I made a mistake here. Uh, you know what, I can fix it. Uh, so this is five boxes uh, and g has 10. So that means our result will have 15 boxes. There we go. Okay, so uh, what that means is that F plus G is going to have 15 boxes. Okay, so if we count the boxes for G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, good, I can count. 
uh, yeah, what we're going to find then is that the horizontal component of f plus g, if we count boxes all the way over, we should count 15 boxes, okay? So our, hor our horizontal component of f plus g will be equal to 15 boxes in this case. And that's not a coincidence. So the horizontal magnitude of our resultant vector is the sum of the horizontal components of the vectors being added or subtracted. Okay, that of course then is also true of the vertical components. And then to summarize, uh, we're just going to say the horizontal component of our resultant vector f plus g is equal to f sub x plus g sub x. And these, of course, are the horizontal components. So the vertical component of our resultant vector then is equal to f sub y plus g sub y. These, of course, are the vertical components of the vectors that we're adding together. Uh, this also applies to subtraction, which would just be the addition of negative vector components. Uh, this plus sign would become a negative sign, so no problem. All right, check out time. So by the end of this lesson today, you will be able to define vectors and scalars and multiply a vector and a scalar and resolve vectors into their horizontal and vertical components as well as calculate the magnitude and direction of a vector given its vertical and horizontal components and vice versa. You should also be able to add and subtract vectors both visually and quantitatively. And that is it. Uh, you've been watching my poorly monetized YouTube channel. Do not like, do not click subscribe, uh, but do have a great day. I'm out.